<laughs> there she is. Last tray of the season in Arizona. That will end the dry washing season. Now, it's important there's gold in there because I ain't been skunked yet this season. I did get skunked one day last season. So, fingers crossed. Wasn't really great dirt. Uh, it's kind of weird. After those big rocks we pulled out, uh, there's just this tremendous amount of light blow sand. And it's really, well, there's some micro in it. But there's no chunkies. Now, I know it looks like there's plenty of rock in there. <laughs> That's all off the top. As you can see, I've 45 the holes and closed it up. This is going to make a big old pond uh, when the monsoons come through. So all this dirt's going to get wet. But I figured might as well stop here with the uh, incredible amounts of garbage dirt. It's just everywhere. If that gets wet, who cares? i got to chuck it out of the hole. There really hasn't been much in it. So... I've closed her up for the season. And I'm going to spend the next oh, a couple days. I'll fill this hole in a little more. You know. And uh, make it so that anim animals can get in and out. That's very important. I don't want to be uh, removing a dead cow or something next season when I come back. Uh, and I'll be picking up all the equipment out here. Taking the dry washer with me today. And, you know, cleaning up around camp. Getting ready for my next adventure. So... <laughs> Looking forward to that. <laughs> well, howdy. Prospector Paul here. Hey, we're getting ready to leave Arizona, so we're going to be out boondocking. What that means is I won't have these nice little connections. No water, no electricity, no sewer. So I got to get ready for that. So in order to do that, I've already filled my freshwater tank and I double-checked my pump. So I shut the water off from the city connection, turned the pump on inside, and sure enough, uh, I didn't have any water. Had to take the pump apart, fixed a little uh, check valve in it. Basically just had to keep pushing on it till it popped free, and uh, away it went. It was just built up with some calcite or calcium around it from uh, the hard water here, and uh, it took it back off. So I tried it again this morning, it works. I probably should have filmed that for you, it was a real easy fix. Uh, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube for that. While I'm waiting for the water tank, water heater, to get done, I uh, went around and I'm checking the air pressures on the tire. And I got them all to the recommended manufacturer specs. This uh, particular set of tires says 65. I noticed a couple of these valve stems were leaking, so I have a uh, little valve stem tool here and I just kind of tightened them up I had one on this side and one on the other side so yeah make sure your valve stems aren't leaking and get your air pressures right uh, you check that when it's cold you don't do that after you've been driving for a couple hours so the next thing to do is to pop these caps off and we're gonna oh grease up the uh, wheel bearings from the outside here now we're going to take a torque wrench and check these lug nuts. All the, all five of them on all four tires, so it'll be 20 checks. They shouldn't be uh, loose, but we check them every time uh, we go to travel. And then I like to check them every other day after that. And then I'll get underneath and uh, grease the wet bolt system that we put in back in July. That makes for a better ride, and uh, things will last longer as long as you keep grease in it. All right, so let's get started on greasing the uh, wheel bearings. So this process is pretty simple. You just pop this little plug out. And then inside, you have a little rubber cap. And you got to pop that out. And you're going to want to set this somewhere where it don't get all full of dirt. So I can see that one's in just a little bit. We're gonna take this here grease gun, put it on there, and we're gonna add a couple of pumps. I can see that just slightly coming back. I'm waiting to see some grease come out. A lot of people like to do this when it's 
good and hot. So the bearings are up to temp. I'm not seeing anything coming out. There it goes. Now, now the grease is moving. All right, that's plenty. Pop that off. Put the little cap back on. And you put this back in there. You got to make sure you get it in there right. You don't want it popping out. There it is. That's all good. Put the center cap back in. Times four. And then that's done. And we'll double check the torque on the lug nuts. And I think you can see the sign over there. Walmart. You got Class C's, you got rentals, you got custom jobs. <laughs> this guy's sleeping on top of his car. You got fifth wheels, Class A's, and a bumper pole. A little bit of everything here. I'm in uh, Page, Arizona. And tomorrow we'll be off to a special spot. Stick around for that. So check this out. Running my Champion dual fuel generator on propane. She's nice and quiet. I was in the rig there. You can't even hear it. Great little unit. I had a 3500 and uh, it messed up. I sent it back to the factory and they replaced it. They give me a brand new one and they don't make the 3500 anymore so they upgraded to the 4500. All right, check out this view. Are you ready for that? That beautiful canyon, huh? It's going to get windy. Goes down into that nice little draw. Beautiful here. Well, I sure got cold last night. I just put on a couple extra blankets and fire up a heater. But that's uh, that snow up in that mountain right in there. And Cloud's been trying to get over that bugger all morning. And that's only, that might be a mile away. There was snow. There's a little bit left on the mountain way out there. The sun's already melting that off. Sure is pretty. And then there's a whole bunch of snow trying to stay out of the sun along that mountain range there quite a bit ah the joys of boondocking <laughs> well it's time to make some breakfast and warm up the rig so let's see what we got <laughs> look what just came out of the oven fresh muffins and i don't smell that they're burnt this time usually the bottoms burn on them so what i've done is i've taken two cookie sheets stacked them on top of each other and put the muffin pan on top that forces the heat around up, cooks the muffins, and it doesn't burn them. Finally, success. Only took a year and a half to learn that. <laughs> well, I'm afraid my nice sunny morning's gonna go away. These clouds rolling in. So I got a laugh. Pulled over here just to take a little break. And uh, I've always been looking for pyrite. And I just looked down at this rock and checked that out. That is Kelco pyrite. Little grains all over in there. That is cool as heck. This is copper ore. 
a lot of iron staining in it and there was some green you can see where the, the blast hole where they drilled this is where they drilled put the charge in blew it out of the mountain but yeah it's got a green stain to it just copper or more cocoa pyrite so cool there it's off the list found some pyrite <laughs> There's another one. Got a little more. Look at all that pyrite. Wow. Huh. Surprised somebody hasn't chipped it out. Maybe somebody did there. But they're not real big cubes. Not like you'd want to have for a uh, display. All mine rock. There's some of that copper ore. The green staining. Definitely cocoa pyrite. Got some agate looking material too wow oh, big old cavity there huh lots of pyrites iron and greens huh well howdy prospector paul here hey today i'm just outside of ely nevada and i'm standing on top of garnet hill and we're going to look for some garnets but before we do I'm looking at this uh, copper strip mine over here. And a big old truck running along. I don't know if the GoPro will pick him up. But he's running. They've been working at a long time. City of Ruth is right down there too. I think I'm up around 83,000 feet or something like that. I know I can't breathe. There's no air up here. No, I think it's about 7,700 here. And every video I've seen of this place... Everybody always gets a shot of the bathroom. <laughs> it's not a big parking lot. I wouldn't try bringing up a bumper pole trailer here. And I got one behind me, but I didn't bring it up here. I left it down on BLM land. And Well, it's moving day. Got to get out of here. It's uh, starting to cloud up a little bit. Big storm coming in. Going to bring a lot of high winds and uh, get really cold here in Nevada. <clears throat> so... Rather than burn a bunch of propane and try and keep the rig warm, I'm going to head about three hours north, try and beat the wind, get to my next destination. It's a campground, real cheap one, and uh, use their electricity to keep the rig warm. But it's funny, while I was looking around here in my boondocking spot, I started noticing some crystals. And, of course, I can't find any right now. Yeah, they're all over the place. Right here. Right here. These are feldspar crystals. So the granite here must have cooled really slowly to <clears throat> make the bigger crystals. Wow, there's a real big one. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. I think I'll pick a few up. Not too many. Maybe some of the better ones. And uh, who knows? I'll come up with something to do with them. All right. I'll be back. Well... I made it to Alaska, obviously. Check out all that snow. Cool. Funny thing is, I don't even remember driving across the border. <laughs> now I'm in northern Nevada. About 7,000 feet. And she's snowing up here. That's pretty crazy. These old trees are trying to bud. But it just ain't going to happen. <laughs> now I know you all feel sorry for me. Because I spent most of the winter in a short sleeve shirt just like now. And sent you videos of nice 70, 80 degree sunny days. <laughs> it's okay. I, uh, I had this coming I guess. It is kind of pretty. Montana is just a terrible looking state. <laughs> Look at all that. Unbelievable. Just gorgeous. What a cool state, man. There we go. Beautiful mountains. Darn cool. 
Well, I'm still boondocking out in Montana, and uh, we just had an interesting rig pull in next to me. I talked to the gentleman to see if it was okay to film him, and he said, go for it. Check this out. What a cool camper. Probably get out of the sun there. There we go. So he's taking this to a trade show down in, imagine this, Arizona, where I just came from. But yeah, what a cool rig, huh? Great truck to go with it. Check out offgridtrailers.com. We'll get a better shot of that. Yeah. Sun. There we go. Offgridtrailers.com. Check them out for your camping needs. Unbelievable. What a nice rig. What's your YouTube channel? Uh, we're just under Off Grid Trailers. Off Grid Trailers is the uh, YouTube channel. Yes, sir. All right, you guys check them out. Subscribe to them. What the heck? Well, I'm down here at the Clark Canyon Reservoir in my southern, southwest Montana, just off of I-15. And I come down here a couple days ago. It was cold and really windy. Today was actually a pretty perfect day here for middle May. But uh, I saw these rocks and they really caught my attention. There's something glittery in there. The size of that. There's millions and millions of garnets in this stuff. A couple of the big ones there. They're not formed real well at all. But there's just, it's everywhere. Big outcropping up there. Go take a look at that. Oh my goodness. Look the size of some of these. They're all druzy. Huh. Yeah, this is the, the bedrock. And it's just got tons and tons of these garnets in it. Now these were bigger bigger ones I wonder I think they're a crunch berry so these were garnets that were formed and then this rock got heated and it distorted the garnet material I'll bet you any money they're pretty dark they're red and brown and there's just tons of them here there's some big ones in that rock right there unbelievable so cool Let me give you a shot of the reservoir. Such a contrast with the snow up in the mountains. I don't know if you can see that truck running out there. That's I-15. Can't hear it from here. It's great. And then you have the campsites they're all free campsites so you just show up you can stay up to two weeks here you get a, a fire pit and uh, a little picnic table inside a little shelter and a place to park your vehicle that's all they got here but it don't cost nothing <laughs> so like I said it's free to camp here no real amenities you do have a water pump down by the lake I don't know how good the water is. There wasn't any warning signs on it. There is a, two bathrooms there. They're vault toilets, I'm sure. But if you want power, you gotta bring your own. And it does have great internet here. There's a cell tower just south of here. I can see just on the other side of the lake. So it's got great cell signal, which equals great internet for me. And like I said, you get a fire ring. And you get a shelter with a picnic table in it. And it's pretty nice. It is really quiet here. You don't hear hardly any noise from the road. It's uh, quite rare. Gotta have somebody with some uh, really aggressive tires. And I've heard a couple people in the last four days, but nah, it's been peaceful here. 
and the view is spectacular the other day the other morning that whole mountainside was white uh, mostly frost and it, I watched it melt up the hill towards the snowpack lost quite a bit of snowpack today yeah she retreated a lot the mountain range to the south there hopefully the GoPro picks it up it's still got a lot of snow up there for mid-May if you go west straight as the crow flies you'd only be about an hour from uh, Yellowstone but there's no road that goes west over this mountain range you got to go either way south or way north go around the mountain and then over to Yellowstone and I wouldn't make this a camping destination you're probably two and a half hours from the west gate here just because of all the north and the south you got to go well yeah kind of crazy thinking I'm only a hour away from a super volcano <laughs> <laughs> this video off here um, I am in Fairbanks Alaska and I'm on the shores of the Chena River Can you imagine living here this is uh, the south southwest corner of Fairbanks we're gonna go supply up tomorrow morning and then head up into the gold camp uh, I'll probably show you a few clips of some of what we saw on the way up here Next week we'll do uh, part two, the rest of the journey to Alaska. It's been uh, really something. So hopefully you stick around and uh, check that out next week. All right, Prospector Paul wrapping it up here. Do me a favor, like, share, and subscribe. Leave me one of them comments. You know I love them. I don't know what kind of uh, internet I'm gonna have. There's absolutely none where I'm going. But uh, when I get back into Fairbanks, I'll uh, release videos and try to answer uh, comments from the week before and or two weeks before I don't know what it looks like yet so we'll find out <laughs> all right y'all take care prospector Paul out. Oh.